Good morning. A little loud. We're going to teach you guys how to schedule more people in the office. It's one of my favorite subjects. It's my favorite subject. Let's go ahead and dive right in. We've got a limited amount of time to cover a long topic. We were formed in 2008. Everything that we do is basically to help doctors to hire, train, and oversee the nation's top practice managers and salespeople. It's pretty much all we do. Every practice that we have worked with has grown in their first year by between 100,000 and 1.25 million. And the biggest reason that happens is because our average close ratios in office are higher. Um, you'll hear me talk very plainly and openly today and in every speech I ever give about closing and sales. And I do agree that in office, maybe our language will change, but the reality of the situation is that to some extent there's a sales process going on. And I believe that sales is something that we do for people, not to people. It's a good thing. They're coming to us because they want what we're selling, just like we bought a really nice dinner last night in Vegas and we decided to play blackjack and we enjoyed having a really beautiful room to stay in. It's not something they're doing to us, it's something they're doing for us because we want it. What we do know is this, here's your national averages, whether you're in plastics, facial plastics, oculoplastics, other plastics, dermatology, etc. What we do know for sure, absolutely without question, is that when we're talking about the major purchases within your practice, we're not talking about a Botox where every single person is generally buying when they walk in, but we're talking about something from $2,000 to $50,000 or more. The national average practice is booking about 15 to 20 percent of the people who walk in the door that day, meaning here's my credit card, put me on the schedule for July, ready, set, go. And then out of the remaining 80, 85 percent, about 15 to 20 percent call back later. They check with their spouse, they double check their schedule, they rethink things, they wait three years, they finally make the decision to move forward. That gives us an overall average of around 30 to 40% of the people walking in your practices looking for high ticket items that are actually purchasing. And that kind of makes sense. They see you, maybe they see a competitor, maybe they don't move forward at all. Uh, maybe you're a little better, a little worse than the average person in your area in terms of popularity or selection rates. And that gives you an average. In every practice that we work with, we have an in-office booking ratio on high ticket items of 60 to 85% before they walk out the door. We don't say that to brag about it, but simply to make sure that you can understand that these rates are possible from Houston to New York, from Orange County to Baltimore, from DC to Miami, all over the nation, these are the numbers that can and should happen in every single office. So, uh, unfortunately, one of the big things we have to realize is that we vastly overestimate the numbers that call back to book later. Now when it rains, it pours. When you get one call back, you get three and it saves your week. But in general, it doesn't happen anywhere near as much as we think. It happens about 15 to 20% of the time. Now, many of us think this way because of something called the availability heuristic. It's a psychological principle that you can Google, or as I call Google now, goggle. I'm actually sort of um, trademarking that. We, we goggle things now. The availability heuristic, what it basically says is this. We have a tendency to give too much credence to what we just heard. So if you have somebody running an hour and a half late, you start to believe all your patients are late. If you run late as a doctor an hour and a half, you want to change the way that you structure your consultation schedule when really it might have just been a one-off. If you get two callbacks the same day that book surgery with your practice, everybody calls back. And if nobody calls back for a year or for a day, you assume nobody calls back for a year. It's the availability heuristic. We give too much credence. The facts are right there though. How do we know this? We actually test it. Everything we teach isn't just because someone's smarter went to a good school, though hopefully we did those things as well. It's because we actually tested them in all the offices nationally and only roll things out once we know for sure that they work. So step one, you gotta believe in, in sales. We talked a little bit about this already. Your patients are going somewhere. Raise your hand if you think you are or the doctor you work for is among the best in your community. It's like 99%. And if you didn't raise your hand, I hope your doctor's not sitting next to you. <laughs> Bob over here is kind of meh. <laughs> now, you guys all work for someone who's the best in your community. At least you believe it. I don't know if it's 100% true, but it probably mostly is if you're in this room. So when they don't pick you, do you think they're not moving forward? They're moving forward almost every time with someone who you probably think is much worse than you. So you're saving their life. Like a falling egg landing on a soft, billowy pillow. That's your role, that's sales. So they're going somewhere. What we really teach, what I'm gonna spend my last 10 minutes talking about is that the phone is when they buy. 
Now, I think someone earlier today correctly pointed out that it's no one thing that makes people purchase. It's not just the doctor or just the patient coordinator or just the practice manager or just the receptionist. And yes, all of those things may factor. I believe that without the doctor, nobody buys, but not during the time the doctor believes. Most physicians believe that the patient is buying once they meet them. We don't believe that. We believe the reason they're even contacting your office to begin with is you meaning they never would have picked you or called you or sent in a web form if they didn't like your credentials and accolades and before and after photos and testimonials. That's the real point where they're picking you. From that point forward, they're actually picking your patient coordinator, the person they speak to on the phone, in our opinion, and demonstrably proven, more so than the doctor themselves. Your people don't want to tell you this, but they mostly want you to just be nice and get in and get out of that consult. So you've got to hire and retain a superb salesperson and make sure that they understand why the phone is so important. What we teach in a much, much more in-depth version in our Yellow Telescope training seminar is what we call gather, give, get. It's just one of those cheesy things. It's three Gs. It's easy to teach, and that's why we picked it. We gather, then we give, then we get. When we get on the phone with a new patient, your most sophisticated communicator should be speaking to them. Now, the receptionist may pick up, and the receptionist may be the receptionist slash manager slash PCC slash nurse, and if you have a hybrid, then that's the person. But if you've got two employees or four employees or eight employees or 100 employees, your most sophisticated communicator should be getting that call once we realize this is someone looking to spend thousands of dollars in your practice. And the first thing they're going to do is they're going to say, gather, give, and get. And this is the opening line that sort of funnels people into the perfect phone call that's going to increase and quadruple your closing ratios. We're going to say, thanks so much for calling Dr. Smith. This is John. How can I help you? And they're going to say, I'm interested in a rhinoplasty or facelift or blepharoplasty or breast augmentation or reduction or whatever it is. And we're going to say, wonderful. That sounds fantastic. What I need to do is just go ahead and gather a little information. Then I can go ahead and give you a little information. Then I can go ahead and get you on the schedule. How does that sound? Say it a little slower than I just said it. I'm just going to go ahead and gather some information. I'm going to go ahead and give you some information. I'm going to go ahead and get you on the schedule. How does that sound? They're going to say, great. Sometimes you say, oh, actually, I'm a little bit in a rush. I really just need to go ahead and get an appointment with you. I just need to get on the schedule just because I got this thing about a free console. I just got to get, get on the schedule. We're going to say, great. Well, absolutely. What the doctor goes, and has, goes ahead and has me do before we schedule you is he, go, he has me go ahead and kind of just gather a little bit of brief information. Then he has me go ahead and give you a little bit of information. Then he has me go ahead and get you on the schedule if you have just a couple of minutes right now. And then they say, okay, I've got a couple minutes right now. What we're going to gather are basically what we call the seven steps to making a sale, which is to build rapport, to gather goals, to give company accolades or build up the doctor to guide like status, to go ahead and give some basic information on the procedure, give them a ballpark price range, to trial, close, present, price, and go. I rattle through those because you don't have to memorize them and they're not all that important, but if you just gather, give, and get, they'll kind of do all those things for you. We're just going to gather some information and give them some information, go ahead and get them on the schedule. Well, what are we going to gather? Well, gathering is a little bit of rapport building. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, you live on that street. I've got a friend down the block. Or, oh, your kids go to that school. We can build a little bit of rapport. People don't buy because they like you, but if they don't like you, they're not going to buy from you. So we've got to build a little bit of rapport. We're going to gather their contact information because it just would be silly not to. We've got to have their name and address and phone number and email address and so on. And then we're going to gather their goals. We're going to say something to the effect of, well, Barbara, tell me a little bit about what your goals are. What are you hoping the doctor could do for you? Oh, well, you know, I just have a little bit of a bump on the nose. I was hoping to kind of take that down. Maybe a little bit of tip work, but I'm not so, so sure. I've got some concerns about anesthesia. We say that's fantastic. We're, of course, notating everything thoroughly in our computer system because we can't remember every single patient. And the more notated we are, the better we do. I just took my first breath. <laughs> Next, we're going to give them some information. We say, okay, now that I understand your goals, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of information. We're going to do what we call accolades, or Dr. Stump speech, I call it. Every politician, Republican or Democrat or whatever in between, they're going to give you a stump speech. You should vote for me for the following eight reasons. Well, you've got to have your Dr. Stump speech down. Dr. Kroll is a graduate of the NYU School of Medicine. She's board certified. She's also double board certified in oculoplastic surgery. She's performed over 8,653,000 procedures. She's been alive since one year AD. She's been featured in GQW, Alessence, and Vanidades. Ahora vamos. Hablan español ustedes? Muy bien. Vivo en Miami. So you, you explain all the good things, build up some accolades. Once you've kind of built the doctor up, they now have built rapport, they like you. We have a little bit of their goals, they feel heard and understood. We've told them a little bit about why we're the best possible choice in the community, if not the entire nation, if not the world, because we've done 8,643 procedures. 
And now we can go ahead and give them a brief overview of kind of what the healing time might be and the basics of the procedure. Because there's really two things a patient must know before they can give you a time frame of when they want to proceed. One is they have to know the price, because if it's free, they could probably go tomorrow. And if it's $2 billion, they probably will never go. And if it's somewhere in between, they may need to make some decisions based on that. And the second thing they must know is healing time. Because if it takes 17 weeks to heal, they may never proceed. If it takes one day, they could probably do it tomorrow. And if it takes a week or a week and a half, they may need to coordinate that. So we've got to get that information into them over the phone, not once they arrive. So we're going to give them a little bit of basic information. So great, the procedure that you're looking for, it's a basic outpatient procedure. It's performed under IV sedation or general anesthesia, which means you'll be asleep, which means you go five, four, three, two. You wake up, you feel nothing, you remember nothing, there's no pain whatsoever. You're going to have some general bruising in the area for about a week. If you just need to be kind of back to work, generally presentable with a little bit of makeup, a week should do it. If you're looking to be on TV, give it a couple of weeks. And if it's your daughter's wedding, well, do this like at least a month in advance just to be sure. Now they've got some sort of ballpark timing. And then we're going to say, now in terms of pricing, a lot of people are curious, and we absolutely believe in giving prices over the phone. We don't believe in exact prices, we believe in ballpark. We want to weed people in, not weed people out. This is not a weeding out, this is not a pre-qualification process. It's an education and weeding in process. So if your price is typically around 9000 then I'm probably giving a price range of around six to 12 to start, because we know we get the super crazy revisions and we know we get the super easy tips. And I'm going to say, gosh, to give you a broad price range, it could be as high as 12000 It could be probably as low as six. Very rarely is it either, Barbara. Very, very unlikely you'll be that high or that low. Most of them tend to be somewhere in the middle. Once you arrive, we'll be able to give you something more exact. But eh, let's plan on somewhere in the middle in that eight, nine, ten-ish range. They now have an idea. Once we have the idea, we get to the most important part, which is the trial close before we get them on the schedule. A trial close is not asking for the order. It's not a sale. It's a feeling out of the situation. It's, if I were single and you were single and it were Friday and there was a steakhouse and it was Vegas and I looked amazing and it showered and put on cologne, is there any reason you might not go with me? If, if I were asking, I'm not asking. I'm just curious. It's the little thing that you pass to like the kids when you're in fourth grade that had like, if you like me, check here. If you don't check here, it wasn't actually officially asking on the day. It's a trial close, a feeling out. That way if they say, no, look, I didn't like you either. I just wanted to make sure you also didn't like me. So we're going to trial close. We're going to figure it out. So we're going to say something effective. Well, wonderful, Barbara. Let's go ahead and get you on the schedule. Now, out of curiosity, just assuming you love Doc, assuming everything goes smooth in your appointment, and let's assume that the prices are ish, kind of where I was talking about. Let's just assume that. If that were the case, do you have sort of a time frame in mind? And right here, guess what they say? Oh, I don't know, I guess kind of a, you know, sooner versus later, the next month or two. They just bought. They now become what we call the punch me in the face patient, which is as long as you don't punch me in the face, I will be moving forward with your practice. Now, yes, all those other things are going to matter when they arrive. The receptionist has to be friendly. They do have to have a nice experience with the doctor. But it's more about not screwing up than it is about being perfect at that point. They're comfortable with the cost, they've got rapport, they like you, they know the doctor's amazing, and we've just about got a sale. We've got to have a paradigm shift in this industry. I think one of the reasons that it took me a little while to get the hang of it when I first started was I knew nothing about the industry at all and someone actually hired me probably making a mistake initially. But I think one of the reasons I'm successful in the industry now is I came from, with, from a different background. And I've noticed a lot of the very, very best people sometimes don't begin in the medical industry because we bring different philosophies and we ask questions about the way we do things naturally. And the natural way is bring every single person in no matter what immediately. Um, but the reality is why are we waiting till they walk in the door to find out what the issue is? Barbara is crying. She's freaking out. Why don't we have her drive across the state and come visit me to find out? No, why don't we ask her over the phone? Are you okay? What can I do to help you? Our attitude is you're going to get objections, you're going to have problems, you're going to have these things, but let's handle them over the phone before they come in. We've got to change the way we think, and we've got to get patients in the right way. Some people are like in class in the front row, and then some people are in the back of the class with their pants slouched, kind of like, you know, you know, smoking drugs and staring up at the ceiling. They're both in class, both patients showed up to your practice, but only one of them is really showing up the right way. You've got three groups. You've got the absolute definite buyers. You guys think they buy 95% of the time, they buy about 70. This program takes them to 95. You've got the triple non-threat. I have no money, I have no credit, and I have no co-signer. They're not buying either way. 
They're like LeBron James was in the finals this year. I'm sorry, LeBron, I love you. And then you've got a step or two away. And these people, we can work through some objections by phone and be in good shape. So you've got the three dates. It should be the first call. The second date is before they meet the doctor when they arrive in your office. And the third date is when the doctor comes in. By the third date, they should know they're going to kiss you. In summary, phone's your friend. You're going to spend the time one way or the other handling these objections. So do it over the phone, do it in advance. And when you do, your in-office booking ratio grows. Change the way people show up and make sure they're showing up the right way. If you want some more information on a quick talk, we'll be at booth 203. It's in the door to your left in the convention center on the right, but to the left. Uh, and also, if you're looking for web stuff, go to SE Oversight. Sister booth just opened. And uh, sign up for the free newsletter and podcast. There's no charge. The podcast is basically my partner and Ed and I just being idiots um, and having fun for like a half hour a month. It's really fun. And you actually learn some stuff. And the newsletter is actually very serious business information. A lot of good stuff on the website. Really appreciate your time. Thank you.